working on adrenaline. And let's think about what's really going on here. The government comes in, very calming voice. Okay, now Mr. Bose gets up and deliberately walks to him and does this shot. Well, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, think about what's going on here. Mr. Bose has been hit, not to the ground and beaten. He has been hit and violently hit violently enough to knock out one of his teeth. To knock out one of his teeth. If you go to a dentist, they're going to pull out teeth. They're going to give you anesthetic. They're going to put you out for that. His tooth was. Can you imagine the violent nature of that? You know, it's not that. That doesn't knock out your tooth. I mean, it's not that. You have to hit somebody with amazing violence to do that. And in seconds, there's this amazing violence and gunshots going out. There's no gunshots going off. There's no rational thought going on that. You're operating from fear. That's all that is. Your adrenaline is going, and fear has taken over your body. And you're doing anything at that point to fend off this violent attack. Right after all this happened, he's covered in blood, he's got a bloody mouth, he's blood all over him. His, his ear is caked with blood. You know, it, it's, it's, it's incredible that the government says, well, he didn't have any injuries. And you had a couple people who see him at the scene. You cannot look at this and say he doesn't have any injuries, not just to his mouth. You have these exhibits back with you. It's disingenuous to say he wasn't injured. And it also, I'll point out later, it also flies in the face of what the forensic people say. 21-year-old, now 25-year-old, scared young man. He's probably had the most fear that he will ever have in his life. And the only thing that I can do now is turn this case over to you and put his life in your hands. What is his intent on all those shots? Remember, the, the intent is the operation of the mind. And how do you know what's in somebody's mind? You can't crawl in there. You can only determine what someone is in somebody's mind by watching their actions. Their actions tell you what they're intending. He told you his intent in his own words. I intended to shoot him and hit him every time. And the last two ones, boom. Then he has to go over to the body, boom, right between the eyes. This is not self-defense. Here's a definition of aggravated battery, which you should read. But look at that last line, which is this, however. It says, however, the use of deadly force is not justifiable if you find the following. Bradford Bowes was attempting to commit or committing a robbery. If he is doing this unlawful act, he then cannot claim justifiable homicide. He can't do it. And um, two, Bradford Bowes initially provoked the use of force against himself. So we don't read ahead. Bradford Bowes initially provoked the use of force against himself. He initially provoked this by having this plan and executing it to steal the victim's pot, to steal the marijuana. This is, ladies and gentlemen, a crime. Believe it or not, it's theft of a controlled substance. It is a felony. And when he did that, he initially provoked the situation. You can't, you cannot claim Justifiable use of deadly force, justifiable homicide, when you're the one who started it, it doesn't make sense. Bradford Bowes initially provoked the use of force against himself, unless, and you can read these two, the force exerted toward the defendant was so great that he reasonably believed that he was in imminent danger of death or great way harm and had exhausted every reasonable means to escape the danger. Remember another thing that you will find in his statement. He's, he made a statement. There was a point, and I'm paraphrasing, you'll have to find it. But in his statement he says, I found 
my way out. No, that, that was it. He says, I found, I found my way out. That's when I fired. 